everybody. Welcome back to We Are the Batman. I'm Mike. And this is Matthew. All right, so the day has finally come. We are finally going to give our review of The Flash, which came out last weekend. It's been in theaters a week now. Uh, so that being said, the movie's been in theaters a week. If you're listening to this, we're, we're going to do some non-spoiler stuff at the top when we give our overall thoughts, but we will be getting into spoiler-heavy stuff. Uh, we'll, I'll put time codes in the uh, in the show notes for this episode so you guys can kind of know, and we'll we'll make a point of letting you know when we're getting into it. But but if, if you're listening to this, I'm, I'm we're going to assume you've seen the movie, and if you haven't, why are yes. you listening to this? Yeah, three, uh, I, two, one, spoilers happening now, yeah, and like, Nicholas Cage is in the movie, <laughs> ish, <laughs> ish. <laughs> um, but that also got spoiled by the director weeks before the movie came out. You son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> But uh, but so so, yeah, we're going to talk about we'll talk about the movie in pretty in depth. We do have one piece of news to get into first, which actually relates to this movie in its own way. Um, Andy Muschietti, who directed The Flash, it was announced the day The Flash premiered uh, in, in theaters everywhere that he has been uh, 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 brought on to direct Batman, the Brave and the Bold, James Gunn's DCU Batman movie. Um, it's an not gonna lie didn't see that one coming i think i had seen it as a rumor about two or three weeks ago okay um and at the time i was kind of like i mean i guess look james gunn has spoken nothing but positive about this movie yeah so with how he felt about andy muschietti's directing yeah so if he's happy with it then i i get why he's given him the job you know, not to get too far into it, but the best parts of the movie, the Batman stuff almost. Well, and I mean, it's really clear this guy had a handle on it because he had to, again, we're going to, we're going to get into this way yeah. in the actual podcast itself, but this guy knows how to handle Batman and it wouldn't be the first time he did. I mean, even before the flash, he did the two uh, Stephen King, it movies, it and it chapter two, which are very good movies. And I I am so afraid of clowns, it's a superpower. Like, I am superhumanly <laughs> afraid of clowns. And those two It movies rock. So he knows how to juggle his superhero action, his darker themes, his horror themes. So, again, we'll, we'll get into this more in the actual podcast. But that, that is a, it is a cool... They announced this the day The Flash hit theaters. that uh, And it was confirmed by people at Warner Brothers. So that is... Yeah, that is interesting news uh, to get nonetheless. Uh, other than that, yeah, no, no other news has been going on right now since the Flash came out. Uh, we'll we'll get into some other things later on in the review. But with that being said, let's let's do let's go ahead and get into get into this review. Overall thoughts. Do you want yeah, to go first, or do you want yeah, me to go let's first? Start, let's do our overall non spoiler thoughts here first uh, about the movie. So I saw it uh, the Friday it opened, uh, like right after work um and i mean i had a blast i had i was uh, kind of grinning the whole time with with it just seems like it was it was fun this was so much it was fun um it was uh it was for me it was it was a lot of fun i i laughed at every time i was supposed to, it was a joke i laughed i thought they handled certain you know this is a, this is not a direct adaptation of flashpoint but definitely heavily influenced by it um and given that i've read the comics and we just i just rewatched the movie for the review uh last we, we did last week on the animated movie um it, so those those flashpoint elements were fresh in my mind and there was a lot of things they did in in adapting flashpoint that i thought they actually kind of did better than flashpoint did uh we'll get into that when we get into the spoilers so i i i liked there was a they, they did some they took some swings with this movie they, they took some some chances with this one in doing things differently uh and subverting expectations i was really happy with i i have my nitpicks here and there um and and some other thoughts we'll get into but overall i i had a good time with this movie i think i gave it four stars on on letterboxd um i've heard i've heard people's uh complaints and criticisms and while i think they're totally valid it didn't change the fact that i just i had a good time i had a really good time with this movie and i was i was satisfied with it at the end and so uh so yeah i i enjoyed it uh, you saw it saturday saturday after it came out yeah so i saw you... it I, I saw it saturday and and i've 
I almost wish I would have went to see it Friday because yeah. I went to an IMAX showing and there were six people in the IMAX showing. And, and it was just early in the day? Or? It was like noon on Saturday, which given uh, the current box office, I think it was more of a telltale sign than we thought it was at the time that there was nobody in the theater. <laughs> yeah. But the I say that because like, Six people in a normal theater is different than six people in an IMAX theater. I don't know what the IMAX theaters you're, you go to are like, but the ones here in Texas, it's Texas. So there's like a hundred rows. I don't, go to, I don't go to IMAX. Okay. So yeah. So the I, I, IMAX. I don't spend IMAX money. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was my wife's birthday. I thought, why not? So sure. like, yeah, there's like a hundred rows and it's like 60 across. Like they're just, it's just a gigantic theater. So to have only six people, there was zero audience energy. So I kind of feel like I really wish I'd gone to a different showing that was full to, to have that, you know, excitement. But my yeah. wife and I had a good time. I thought it was a, f- a fun movie. I don't think it's the movie that everybody has been saying is this great film that is going to, you know, quote unquote, save DC. But um, I think the biggest problem, in my opinion, is that the the movie itself is missing a main villain. I I think that kind of you get into the weird, like the superheroes cleaning something up more than there's a villain here. And I feel like that is probably the, the biggest downfall of the film, but okay. uh, overall it was like, like, will I watch it again? I don't know, but I had fun watching it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I wasn't mad. I saw it in the theater, a little perturbed. I paid IMAX pricing. Well, that was on you. That's but, on you. Well, uh, that was a scheduling thing that we don't need to get into right that's now. Fine. But, uh, but no, it was, it was, it was fine. And again, kind of going back to it, like watching it, I will say watching that movie box office aside, I completely get why they're given, you know, Machete the job for Batman. Yeah. My theater, my theater was packed. Yeah. So there was a lot of energy to feed off of, especially for some of the bigger moments. All right. So those are our general thoughts. That's the non-spoiler stuff. Everything from here on out, three, two, one, everything from here on out spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet, pause, go see it, come back and finish listening. Um, Let's uh, we've got we're going to we're going to break this down in kind of chunk by chunk. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the cast and the, and the acting here first. I want to preface this just by saying Ezra Miller is an unbelievable piece of shit. They are a terrible human being who has done reprehensible things. I hope they get the help they need to get life back on track. But I also help the people that were victimized in some way by his actions get justice um it was really hard to shake that out of my head while i was watching this movie that being said i think ezra miller does a really good job in this movie as barry allen this is this his take on barry allen in this movie is what i wish we'd been getting from him in the previous movies you know, Ezra Miller's Barry Allen up to this point has kind of just been the 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 plucky comic relief. Um, and to get to see really a kind of like backdoor character development with this, where, you know, the the older Barry, you know, because there's two Barrys in this movie, there's older Barry and younger Barry is is a, a bit more together, but the younger self is an idiot jokester and we kind of get to see him realize in real time you know this he makes a point of saying like oh my god so this is what people are talking about when they say like i'm annoying and 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 ridiculous he it's 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 backdoor character development it's it's which is something i think this character desperately needed uh after what we'd seen of of him in, in the little time we'd seen him prior to this so um i was genuinely impressed with with Ezra Miller's portrayal of, of Barry, both Barry's uh, in, in this movie. Yes. I, I thought he did a really good job. Um, I don't I, know why he runs like that. I really need to find out why that's I've the never, run. there's one thing I've learned is that other than Tom Cruise, nobody knows how to run in a movie. Uh, Will Smith. Eh, but Tom the fun- Cruise is a professional runner. Well, no, the, the funny thing is, is this is totally, I'm going to tangent it is yeah. Will Smith. Like, 
when him and his son did that stupid after earth movie, Ugh. he like saw his son running and was like, we need to come back to this and like sent his yeah. son to a track coach to learn yeah. how to run properly. Cause he's like, yeah, you have to learn how to run right in movies anyway. So all that say, like, I don't know what this flippy arm. It's very like, um, it's very, uh, like ballet like in a way it's, it's almost it's almost like a weird kind of dance i don't know it just looks ridiculous but all that to say like i think he's his performance was pretty good i'm still not sure why he's not wally west but instead of barry allen but i i thought it was fine like um he's never had more than four consecutive lines i think in any of the th- appearances he's been in so it was I mean, nice to see him Barry Allen, you know, is in a lot of Justice League, but even that, he's just joking around. Like, yeah. it, it, there's not, it, there's no like genuine character. I, I, I will say this: in the Joss Whedon Justice League, um, one of my favorite moments, which is actually not in the Snyder Cut because it was a Joss Whedon scene, is when he tells Batman, you know, I don't, I, I don't save. Like, I usually just run up and push somebody and run away. I don't know what to do. And Batman tells him, you know. Save, save one person, just yeah. save one person and go from there. I like that moment a lot. And I was kind of bummed it wasn't in the slide. It's like, wow, okay, cool. Joss Whedon did one thing right. Um, but we get kind of a similar moment from that, which is interesting with, with his younger self in this movie. Uh, yeah. yeah th- th- this is like, this is the kind of stuff I think about when it comes to Barry Allen, like yeah, crack a joke here or two, but um, yeah, I just, it was, it was kind of a, it was to go back to my earlier point it's a bummer that I couldn't stop thinking about what a piece of shit Ezra Miller is because <laughs> I was really enjoying their performance as Barry Allen in this. And it's like, man, if you didn't suck so hard, like, like it was hard. It just, I kept having to tell myself that don't think about that. Don't think about it. Just, just take it for what it is. And I know there's a lot of people out there right now who are having a much harder time separating that which i which i totally get i understand that is a hard thing to separate you know artist art art from artist is a hard thing to separate sometimes but just taking it at face value for what it was i i genuinely really enjoyed what ezra miller did which makes it kind of a bummer that they're probably not going to come back to be barry allen because of everything that's transpired and we're we're using this as the reset button yeah i I'm, I'm, I'm a half and half. I, I I've discussed it before. I just from pure apathy, <laughs> I right. can separate the thing. I don't, if, if I was really concerned with what most of these Hollywood people were like, be it political, blah, 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 blah I would probably not watch anything, but at the same time, and I do not, I am not protecting him. I'm not saying he's a piece of crap. They, whatever. As I'm not saying Ezra Miller isn't a piece of crap. I'm just saying, that kind of stuff doesn't come into my mind when I watch a movie. I want to believe you're that character and yeah. not worry about it. But he was, he's fine. Like I, I thought he did better in this than he has in the past, but I'm also not like, wow, that's a definitive flash. I'm so glad. He no, was it, was, in this. it wasn't definitive, but it was, it was still definitely like, you know, if man, if, if we had had this Barry Allen from jump, if, yeah. I think, I would have been saying a lot more praises. One thing I thought that was interesting too was, you know, because we had we never had a, a f- as far as the movies go, we haven't had a Flash origin. We kind of get the Flash's origin in this movie without having to have an origin movie because of the of the you know we go back to the day he's supposed to get his powers, and yeah. so young Barry does all the same bullshit that old Barry did when he for because he goes oh man I went and I did this and I did that and he's like yeah no I did the exact same thing when I got my powers so it was kind of a neat way of backdooring in his origin story um which is not from which is is something totally different from what they did in Flashpoint and I think it's a because in Flashpoint there's one Barry yeah so this was a really neat way of of making of of doing that that was I I think that was a lot of fun Yes, it, it, also, that. <laughs> it also it also lends itself to because people were wondering if they could do like a like they did with Kevin Spacey, where they digitally replaced him with Christopher Plummer in that one movie. And Andy Muschietti came out and said, no, he's in he's in too much of the movie now that I've seen it. Yeah, he is on screen for ninety nine point nine percent of the movie. Like 
there's maybe 30 seconds of screen time that Ezra Miller is not on screen. And when he is, he's usually playing two different characters. So it's like, yeah, they would have had to reshoot the whole goddamn movie. <laughs> yeah, there's no telling what CGI computer things they did to do how much he's in, not just in the movie, but twice in the movie. I, I think for the scenes where there's two of them, I think it's like his brother or his cousin or something. And they it's, just... Well, there's just, some of those scenes where you can tell they digitally... A little bit, yeah. But it, we'll, we'll get into that when we get there. We'll get into that. We'll get, we'll get into that. Uh, I don't think the CGI was as bad as everybody made it out to be, but it's, it, there were definitely times. Um, uh, other cast. Uh, let's talk Let's talk Sasha Kaye, Supergirl, man. Oh, she was great. Who she was like she does not have as much screen time as I was hoping for. It's yeah. not she's not on she's maybe got thirty minutes of screen time. She d- makes the most of those thirty minutes. Whoa, man! Like it, we talked about this last week when we were talking about um, Flashpoint about the idea that Sasha Kai there's going to be a Supergirl movie, and we just we hadn't thought about that means Sasha Kai is probably going to be Supergirl. And I'm I, hoping on that. Now that I've seen the movie, I'm like, yeah, no, I hope she sticks around as Supergirl. This she, she rules. I don't know. how. I mean, I don't know. It's it's hard to say since they're resetting everything, but they I think they'd be fools not to to keep her as the same, like obviously different character because reset. But I think they'd be nuts to not keep her around as Supergirl. Yeah. Even if they figured out a different way to have, you know. If she's just the Supergirl of whatever the DCU reboot is, it's not particularly this version. Right. I would be fine with them continuing to use that actress as Supergirl. I yeah. thought she was, she did a solid job. Like you're saying, with the limited amount of time she had, she was great. Um, and She left an impression. Yeah. Like that, like there's two things we need to glean from this. One is that she needs to be Supergirl. Yeah. It's, Yeah especially because like you talk about like it would be a different version it would be a different version anyway because this supergirl is super jaded after being held in captivity for 15 years or however the hell long it's been so it's going to be a different you know it would be a different character no matter what but it like they just it's it's super easy to have this person just be supergirl and and i would love to see her carry a movie especially if they're doing the uh is it the tom king run of uh, a uh, woman of tomorrow is it yeah. Tom King wrote that yeah i i think i think she is prime ready for for that for that i would she was great i mean i i really cannot under overstate i think how much she made of the limited screen time she had which again yeah. is i thought was a really interesting play on the part from flashpoint where it's superman that's been held by the russians all this time i thought that was a really interesting it's it's a it's different from how it is in 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 Flashpoint, but it's similar enough that I was like, that's that was re- a really well done. That is a thing. really great way to not have to deal with Cavill again. <laughs> because it remember, is. this was shot like three years ago. This is when Cavill is out, but not in out weeds. in. But yeah. yeah, you don't know because no one ever freaking said anything. But my point is that yeah, rather than do we get Cavill, do we get somebody else? Just make it a girl and. Yeah no one's going to question it. And I think she's great. And yeah, I really do hope that she, they, 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 she uh, survives the reboot and ends up in the gun verse. Well, it's also, it's also a neat way of, of telling it without making it a direct adaptation of flashpoint. Like if you're going to do something and you want to, because it's really, if you're going to adapt flashpoint directly, then you're going to be drawing all kinds of comparisons. If you make enough changes to the characters you use and how they're portrayed, you get a little more room for creative liberty without people drawing too much comparison. Correct. So there's, there's just more you can do. All right. So let, let's get to, to the other uh, bit of cast we got, we got here, which is, which is two versions of Batman. Uh, we got Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton, both playing uh, their respective versions of Batman in this story. Uh, let's talk about, let's talk Michael Keaton first. Um, easily, easily the best part of this movie is Michael Keaton's return as Batman. I mean, what just being as tapped into it as he was uh, Mushetti's direction and handling of, of how they wanted to handle this version of Batman and incorporate it in. And um, also kind of the role that he plays in, in the greater story of things. 
and, and, and I mean, you know me, I, lo- I love me my Keaton Batman. Um, <laughs> you know, I love it so very much. I was real bummed we didn't get to see him drive around in the Batmobile. I was really kind of hoping it would take it out for a spin. And I was like, oh, please. Oh, okay, fine. Um, I, I had a smile on my face the whole time Michael Keaton was on screen in this movie, man. How'd you feel? I I enjoyed it. Like, you know, I'm I'm not a as much of a hater as Keaton as Batman as I was previously, but I I I would 100 percent say if if you love Keaton as Batman, this movie blew mm-hmm. your socks off. Mm-hmm. Um I oh. think he was very, very good. I him explaining the the spaghetti timeline thing was amazing. Yes. Um, yeah, them that, giving, right. yeah, them redesigning the bat suit so people can actually move in it. So you get great action scenes was fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, I, I, I don't know who I feel bad for more Keaton or Affleck from this film. Both of them could have easily continued to be amazing Batmans. Yeah. Um, and it's obvious that that was their plan and something changed. And I don't know if we want to discuss that now or later. Uh, about- well, yeah because i mean we're we're on the topic of it so you what do you want to do that in reset theories let's, let's, talk, do let's, reset that, let's say that we're talking about the reset but, but i mean yeah it is they again it goes to the supergirl thing is like if you're going to do a loose adaptation of flashpoint and you're not using thomas wayne you're using bruce wayne then you need to change the characterization because if i i feel like it would have been really easy to just give keaton the thomas wayne treatment at which yeah. point it would have been like cool then just use thomas wayne go get jeffrey dean morgan yeah. which everybody <laughs> would love to see anyway yeah. and let him and let him play thomas wayne's batman in this uh, uh which would have been great i mean like, yeah. I'm, like i would i would have been into that um so i like that they in using keaton's batman they got to play with the characterization where it's like no he's not this jaded war-torn batman it's a he's a batman that was so good at his job he put himself out of business gotham is now the safest city in in the world and he doesn't need to be batman anymore and so he just kind of has lost all he has no he doesn't does feel like he's kind of lost his way because he's like what else do i have if i'm not batman yeah um was a very and he's it's a lighter character it just it was a it, again it was a, a great way of changing get, giving yourself room to play by not doing a direct adaptation of flashpoint with the batman character correct and it also aside from the car and that it's michael keaton mm-hmm. there's no reference to the things that happen in the movies not really it's a it's they didn't shoot in the same place they shot uh the the the, the wayne manor but it's designed to look the yeah, same very like the similar room, the, the, the room same statues the, same stat the armors yeah the one yeah. that he bought in japan um was was there uh the bat cave is close enough it's yeah it's again it's just off enough um but you see when he goes into like his his room of suits it's like yeah no this is Clearly, you know, in the years that he was making Gotham the safest city in the world, he had time to update everything. And so I, I, lo- I loved I loved how just barely out of date his stuff was. Yeah. Uh, the computer was the computer was cool, but he hadn't it, but it yeah. hadn't been updated in a bit. I when he pulled out the tape measure and the flip phone, I laughed so goddamn hard. Yeah. Uh, which the whole theater did and you were supposed to they were meant to be jokes you know when he starts trying to hack the computer with a with a goddamn sidekick yeah um Is and really i love pressing keys <laughs> and, he's just, and i love the yeah i love the callback to the how much do you weigh thing yeah. with, it was it was so i mean again but that's also what keaton's batman was like there was a little more room for levity with that character yeah. and it's just man what the, the adept the tonal adaptation from the eighties from, from Batman and Batman returns, having just watched those for this show, man, Muschietti nailed it. <laughs> he yeah. really nailed it. Yeah. Again, I, I will say like th- this was obviously setting up 
he was going to continue as Batman. And yeah, but it, I thought it was cool. Like, again, I didn't hate it. I thought it was really cool. I like seeing him. I thought all the callbacks were fun. Um, you know, I, I think you know, Michael Keaton is a fantastic actor. Mm-hmm. He has, you know, in the, the eight, between the eighties and nineties, he grew so much as an actor to the point where he's, you know, like there's, you know, dude, I never thought, look, as much as I was never afraid of him as Batman, mm-hmm. he scared the crap at me as Vulture. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Oh, when he talks to Peter in that uh, in the car at the, at yeah. the homecoming dance, yeah, ooh, my my butthole got tight. <laughs> yeah, no, he and I have to have the talk, and then he's I just will, like, I will, I will destroy everyone you love yeah. and everything you uh, you know. It's like I I believe you will. <laughs> yeah, the, the fact that the first question is, does she know? Ah, uh, and you're just like, ah, uh, you're just like, oh crap, he's so good. He's so good in that movie. Um, yeah. I, but I, I also liked there, like there were small moments with, with Keaton's Batman in this too. Like when, uh, when Barry's talking to him through the camera and he's like, I know you're watching me, you know, I don't care. You know, I have a Batman in my world. Like you, you he has an Alfred, you, you had an Alfred and he's got the pen that the, was the clearly a, like a gift from Alfred, you know, yeah. like, cause that means that, you know, I mean, Michael Goff passed away years ago, but like we all love Michael Goff's uh, Alfred so yes. much. And so, you know, and, and it was clear in both Batman and Batman Returns, the love those two had for each other. So uh, acknowledging that um, was 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 excellent. It, it made it made me very happy. Yeah. So with Ben Affleck. <laughs> Man, this movie, you know, if there's one thing I walked away from from this movie, it was sadness that I was like, man, what we could have had with a, if Ben Affleck, what this movie reminded me of, aside from liking it a lot, was how much Ben Affleck got the shaft as Batman. Oh, yeah, definitely. With, definitely. With the old guard. Um, because that opening Batman sequence is, is excellent. I mean, that is, that, that gave me like, like that gave me bail Batman vibes a, a couple times, uh, you know, when he's riding on the bike. Um, and, uh, you know, the fact that he was like, this is Maroney's son. It's like, oh, cool, cool. Like we're dropping Easter yeah. eggs and world building for, for what Batman's world is like in the uh, too bad. We're never going to see it again. Yeah. Th- <sighs> this is one of those, like, I liked the scene. I thought the yeah. motorcycle was stupid. Oh, I really like the scene. I thought his... like the tumbler. So <laughs> yeah, well, no, I I just thought like like it was just like there was parts of it that go like okay, cool. I that's different. Like the shields blocking. Like okay, cool. But he still would have got shot in the face, you know. But <laughs> but no, I thought I thought the scene was cool. I didn't like the visuals. Like I said, I didn't like the motorcycle. For the motorcycle was kind of silly looking. I also didn't like his suit, but suit, I, I was really because because you don't see it very well in the trailer. So I was like, oh, I can't wait to see what this thing actually looks like in the movie. Ah, uh, did not look good. <laughs> well, I also like there's a reason why he has it. It would nice. It'd be nice to see what it does and why he's yeah. wearing it. Like I besides being in, skates in the street, which, which was OK. That was a little much. But I also was like, that's that's a pretty Batman. Thing. Yeah, it didn't look great. Um, the suit felt like a work in progress. Like it wasn't done yet. Um, like he had been working on flash's new suit, which looks great. Um, yeah. And I, I like, we'll get into this in a little bit and then we'll get into design, but I, I like the practicality of the suit. We'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, yeah, but Ben Affleck's bat suit. Um, I like that. They tried to go for the old school color scheme. I yes. thought that was, that was neat. I don't know what was going on with that suit though. Um, yeah. but it no, was, uh, yeah. He was great in it yeah. as far as the acting, his, his scene with Barry, like, yeah, you know, anytime he's had that interaction with when it's a real interaction, yeah. I think Ben Affleck has been fantastic. Like as mentor, I, Bru- mentor, Bruce Wayne, well, just, just Bruce Wayne being Bruce Wayne. And yeah. look, as much as I hate Batman versus Superman, I would love to watch diana and bruce tromping around the world yeah like like give me that that's the movie i need i need you to do 
Ben Affleck and Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman and Batman and redo that Justice League episode made of honor. Like, oh, yes. Oh, yes, please. Like, I would I would love that. Yeah, because their they their chemistry is incredible. Yeah, I think they, they they're so good together. I would love to kind of have seen that more of that. But yeah, I thought, and then of course, like the lasso thing and him, you know, like great joke. I'm, I don't care I'm, what anybody says. That's a yeah, good joke. That's I have a too good much pride joke. to say. Thank you. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> that was a great joke. I don't care what anybody says. I know a lot of people hated that moment. I thought it was a good joke and it landed and it was funny and I, I don't care. It's a good joke. It was funny. It was good. Yeah. It was funny yeah. when they did it with Aquaman too in justice league. It was ill timed. It was the yeah. wrong time for we're, that. Joke. We're all going to die. Good joke. I mean, you're, yeah. you're hot as hell, but we're all going to die. Yeah. <laughs> that should have been, been a lot earlier. That should have been earlier in the movie. Not when the, not right before the big action sequence. Yeah. Um, Cause like in the, in the flash, it's when everything's done. Yeah. Um, but also, man, what is it with wonder woman and all these cameos? She's getting all of a sudden just I... like trying to make up for 84. And the fact that we're probably never going to see her again as wonder woman. Like, I, I feel like it's a weird, like she's the solver of the problem. Getting a little tired of that. Yeah. Just like did, didn't just as much as I like Shazam too, her cameo at the end made no sense whatsoever. Well, and, and if it, she can fly, why yeah. didn't she just grab them and why bring did she them? have to? Yeah. <laughs> because then we wouldn't get the funny lasso joke, and the lasso joke is incredible. Correct. Um yeah, I I definitely walked out of this movie bummed bummed about the fact that it's like because just because Ben Affleck has been dialed in to playing Batman since day one. And this was just kind of a reminder of like, we're never going to see him again as Batman. And what, just what could have been, what he's could an, have he's been. A, he's an Aquaman. Allegedly. I, I still don't believe that movie's coming out. <laughs> it is, it is the end of June. And that movie's supposed to come out in December. If it hadn't been for that end credit scene of Aquaman, I would probably be on board with you. But I think it's I think they're just waiting for this and then they'll they'll we'll see a trailer within the next two weeks. I don't think so. I don't I but think we'll we'll good. see. I don't know. Um, um that's kind of all the big casting I really wanted to talk about. Um I mean, I know Michael Shannon's in this as Zod. Sure. And I think he's good for for when he's on screen because michael shannon is very good as general zod um i just watched if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet uh because um gq does the uh um the actors talking about their iconic roles and they're like like these like 20 minute videos and i just watched his the other day it was brand new and he talks about um how much he loves working with Zack snyder and he talks about how when they when they approached him about doing the flash he was like, and he didn't, he didn't get into all the, like the social politics of it, but he was just like, I didn't feel right doing it unless I had Zack Snyder's blessing. Yeah. I think I've seen he, that. So, so before he even said yes, he went and spoke, he spoke to Zack Snyder and was like, I don't like what happened with, you know, your situation at DC. I'm not going to say yes, unless you tell me it's okay. And Zack Snyder was like, it's fine. Like yeah. I I've, I've made peace with it go go do this thing it sounds it sounds neat and yeah he didn't have to and he talked also about how he's like when he did man of steel because you know so much of that was practical how he you know they were in boot camp for weeks and he's like for this one we didn't have to i was he was like it was a couple weeks of shooting and um because of the way it's used a lot of it is cg so he didn't have to do as much um I also just I love Michael Shannon so goddamn much. Yeah, I think he's such a good actor. So, but it was cool having him come back, um, which kind of plays into what I wanted to get get into a little bit uh, with the movie. Which is um, you mentioned earlier, there really isn't an overarching um, antagonist in this movie. No, I actually kind of appreciate that when I talk about like this movie took took swings, took chances. That's one of the ones I'm, I, I think of is like this movie opted in 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 lieu of a antagonist, they gave it a ticking clock, and I I kind of because the movie is about time travel and time, I kind of appreciated that the antagonist of the movie was kind of time itself, and I actually thought that was 
I don't know if that's what they intended, but that's what I got from it. And I actually kind of, I really appreciated that. Actually, I thought it was a bold choice to say, instead of there being a villain, villain, the villain is time, like the the tick, not just the ticking clock, but time itself. I thought that was kind of an interesting take, um, with how to, again adapting, but not directly with Flashpoint. You know, I thought that was a really, a really uh, a brave. A, a, a bold a brave and bold choice uh uh for, for 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 the movie you uh you feel differently <laughs> i mean if we want to get into that i feel like it's pain it's pain like the 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 the, that's, the that's... whole thing is like like things happen in our lives that are painful and that's who makes us you know yeah. to to jump franchises what am i as much as i didn't like star trek 5 the best part of that movie is when the guy tries to erase kirk's pain and he's like no I need my pain. I want my pain. Like our, our pain makes us. Oh, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Both Bruce Wayne's try to tell stupid Barry, like yeah. you can't change things. Like this is what has happened. The more you try to change things, the more you're going to mess things up. Yeah. I.e. the very end of the movie. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, yeah, which I love, but. Um, I, feelings. Um, I, I, I love it from a, they went there uh, standpoint. Um, oh I love God, it I'm sorry. from I'm like, you're still stupid. You're still <laughs> stupid enough to change things like that is that, that is that, so that, arrogantly that, stupid. That plays into my reset theory. So we'll we'll get into yeah. that in a little bit. But no, I, I thought the decision to not have a singular antagonist and have it instead be a very thematic movie was a was a really bold interesting well, choice and I, if, I appreciated the artistry of it even if dark flash was in it a little more than twice yeah like that was my my thing it's like even if he gives you more of a your ticking time bomb of yeah. like you know he starts like seeing him during the day more. or like you see yeah. like this guy like whatever whatever you're doing this is about to get worse because he's about to come at you yeah um i do i did appreciate that it ended up being the younger Barry mm -hmm. and not the older Barry. And I was like, okay, yeah, because he's inexperienced, he's going to keep thinking, oh, I can do this. I can do this. He's 18, 19 years old. He doesn't know any better. Yeah. He's a kid. And I can remember like at one, like the first time they go like, okay, let's go back. And my wife and I look at each other and go like, mm -mm. Mm. and it's like the more they kept going back, the more it's like, no, this is, we've all watched the time machine. Like this, these people have to it's die in true. this world. But like, also, you know what, you know what I liked about the fact that they showed every time you go back and change stuff over and over again, it's a bad thing is because that was one of my biggest headaches with the flash TV show or the flash in the comics for a while there, or, you know, in, in like the animated movies where it was like, anytime things went South, Barry would just go back in time and reset it and do it again. Yeah. By, sh by playing into the, you know, like the doctor who fixed point in time thing or this across the spider verse canon event thing. It's like certain things are just going to happen no matter what they're going to yeah. find a way to happen because once you introduce the idea of time traveling and changing things into especially comic book universe, that becomes your catch all. That becomes yes. the, well, we can, nothing matters because we can just go back in time and change it by establishing the rule of every time you do that, you are altering things across the board. And not, and not only that, but they're, they're, the thing that you might be trying to stop happen might still happen. Different uh, Marvel's what if did that with their Dr. Strange episode where uh, yeah. Christine had to die in that, in that story. So by doing it in this in this movie in this way th it takes the idea of time traveling to stop things off the table for the future yeah which i thought was smart i thought it was a very smart decision if the it's this very <laughs> if it's very um but i also i i thought it was really cool how we got to see younger Barry slowly start to turn into dark flash as he gets injured and wounded. And yeah, um, I, I was like, Oh, that's, that's cool. It was. And, and the look of that dark flash was yeah. very scary. That was oof. props to whoever designed that. That is a look that was, that was good. That was very good. Yeah. 
which I all thought right. was it was interesting. But yeah, all right, so where are we going now? What you got? All right, so we'll get into the, into the design of this movie because I think there's some things we can we can we can obviously get into about this a little bit. Uh, I love Flash's new suit. Yes, I thought it and was I very lo- cool, and I love that they found a way to because ex- people were wondering why is his lightning different in this movie. And the way it's described is that his suit is designed to like redistribute the energy from that lightning so that he doesn't build up like too much friction um, because he has to tell younger Barry, like your suit isn't designed to like do whatever with the lightning. You're going to have to release that charge periodically. Yeah. And he, that's where we get into like, he turns it into basically a lightning bolt attack, which is it, it is what it is. Um, I think it's one of the weirdest things I've ever done with the Flash, but it's not also not a new idea. Um, but I I like that they made they made the they made it make sense why his lightning looks different, why he needs a new suit, and what what those lines like those little conduits on his suit do. I thought it was very good. I thought it was very smart and very well executed. Yes. Cool. All right. And it didn't uh, look also, stupid like the other one. No, it didn't. <laughs> I also, I liked the windscreens on the eyes. Yes. I thought that was neat. I, by the way, we didn't. I, I love how we're, when the movie starts, like his title card is about to come up on screen. And then the fangirls interrupt it. And so they have to do it all over again. Loved it. Loved it. Because yeah. because I love that. Like literally the, the, the logo is halfway on screen and then it goes away. Yeah. Excellent. Well done. 10 out of yeah. 10 no notes. I liked um I thought the new Batman suit looked very cool. Michael Keaton's. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Keaton's. Not um, Ben Affleck. We've not been ben talking about that. No. Keaton's suit looked cool. Yeah. Keaton's suit cool. I, I thought it looked like it fit him. It looked like it fit him. Yeah. And then I also liked some of the ones that were in the closet. Like there were some cool, if yeah. you look at some of those, those are cool. The the new Batwing, it was cool until that did the weird spinny thing. I don't understand the spinny thing. I I thought that was a neat design choice. I never would have really thought of that. It's, a, I mean, it, it helps you not if you're going to do a lot of spinning. It helps you not have to worry about getting airsick. I guess um, uh, it was it was a it was a neat it was a neat idea. The, the purpose of it, I think, was just I think somebody had an idea in the design team, and they were like, "Hey, what if we did um, this and it'll make a cool scene in the story later?" That was kind of that's how basically I basically what it was. It was there to look yeah. cool. That's what it was for. I wasn't going to hate on it uh, because, I mean, obviously he had to rebuild. He had to rebuild it anyway after it got destroyed in the first first Batman movie. So, um, But I thought, other than that, I thought it looked cool. I liked the little drop thing and you don't have a parachute. Yeah. Yeah, smile. Don't need one. Um, Supergirl's costume, amazing. Oh, such great costume design. Because Cavill's suit was great looking too. Yeah. Um, And yeah, hers hers looked just different enough. Um, It looked very good. Um, I'm trying to Every, think. I mean, the, I mean, I, I, I let's, we've okay. talked about everything else. I think. Well, let's, I mean, let's let's address the elephant in the room and talk about some of the CGI. Um. <laughs> so when he's in, when he's in the Speed Force, I, it didn't bother me because I was like, no, it's supposed to look ridiculous because it's this ethereal, otherworldly, interdimensional bullshit. It's fine. I, I don't care that it looks weird here. It's uh, uh, it's other points in the movie because he's well because he's when he's in the speed force every it it's not reality. It's, I feel like you should have then stylized it more to not be reality. It just like here's what I'll say. If he had, there's I can't decide if it's him being revisionist or if this was his decision. I feel like it's revisionist. I don't know. I feel like like. Because otherwise, like, just make it make it more stylized, so that I know this was your decision. Because uh-huh. to me, it just feels like you just so couldn't I, do it. I I feel like if he hadn't said anything, I still probably would have figured like, yeah, he's in he's in between dimensions. It's gonna look funky. Like, it, yeah. I don't know. That didn't bug me. Now, look, making CGI babies is hard. Ma- doing ba- <laughs> doing babies on screen in general is hard. Man, there was a couple of times those CGI babies looked rough. Uh, ooh, I well, yeah, so my, I, I will say that scene. My anxiety was through the fucking <laughs> during that scene because babies. Yeah, I was. I didn't particularly care for that part. I was okay. like, 
I, yeah, now we're getting in like here, here's, this is where I get super crappy. Like gravity speed doesn't change. So when you're running, you can be super fast, but the moment you lift off the ground, you have now your speed is gone. You're not, you're, you can jump quick, but you still have to wait for gravity to bring you back down. Yeah. But also like we're, we're talking about like an interdimensional speed force. I, like you're, you're trying to inject too much no, real I know. science I know. into superpowers. So. so there's a level of like, let's just let this go. Yeah. It was fine. Like it was cute. Like I didn't hate it, but it was just kind of like, I, I feel like maybe partway through the situation should have been like, we can't make these babies look right. Let's make them dogs. Yeah. <laughs> of course they did this. So they put the service dog in there. Cause, cause once the service dog was in there, I was like, fuck the baby. He's got to save that dog. Yeah. Um, but, um, but no, I think like there were moments where you, I don't understand if one, they were doing the face replacement because it was Ezra Miller twice. From what I understand, it was, yeah, it was like his brother or his cousin yeah. or something like that. Or that so much of this is reshoots. And he looks, compl- she, they, whatever, ugh, they, that Ezra they. looks different. So they had to change his face because it's really obvious. And that end scene when Bruce Wayne walks up that they doctored Ezra Miller's face. Yeah. There's, there's a couple times where, um, when we have two berries, like, uh, where you can tell, there's a little bit of a uh, face yeah. replacement going on. But then uh, there's sometimes when it's just Barry, like I said, in the Aquaman and Barry scene, there's a couple of moments in there. Where I'm like, why did they doctor his face? What is happening here? So I didn't, I didn't notice it in those scenes. IMAX. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, but no, I think, I think the CGI, it was a reshoot thing. I don't know. Yeah. I think that the CGI is no better or worse than it seems to be in all the DC stuff. I think, I think people are making a bigger deal about the CGI in this movie than because I, I expected to go into it seeing Scorpion King graphics. And I was like, yeah, I think every, I, I, but I walked out of it. Like, you know, there's a couple of times, but I think people just need to calm the hell down. I, I, I think yeah. with this movie, I think, I think a lot of people were looking for things to hate about this movie because of the Ezra Miller situation. I can see that. No, I, I think, yeah, I, 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 I think a lot of criticisms are totally fair and valid. There's a few times where like I've seen a lot of other people's reviews and stuff online where I'm like, hey, you're where I'm just like, you're looking for things to be mad about. Yeah. No. Yeah. So. No, I think I think this is where I I I don't know whose idea it was to do the time bubble thing and the way that entire th- situation yeah. looked. I feel like you either change your design yeah or or use live actors to make that stuff like because that was the the part where because they kept going back to it so many times that i was like like either one you just didn't have the budget to make this look right or two you were like whatever i had a hell of a budget um yeah, it had this, a movie also, this, this movie also had a bunch of reshoots uh, yeah. because it kept getting pushed back. I think too is remember it got this movie got pushed back a lot. Oh so, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, well, let's you know while we're talking about the time bubble and all that, we, you know, I, let's let's talk about some of the like the, the multi dimensional uh, cameos because uh, there were quite a few, and I think you know they elicited different responses from different people. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the Nick Cage of it all because. That one got a big reaction in my theater. Once once you see his face, like when you saw the spider first, some folks in my theater were like rumbling, like, wait, wait, are they, are they, is it, is it? And then yeah. once the heat vision goes away and you see the face, my theater was like, fuck yeah! Because we all know the story uh, yeah. of Nick Cage's Superman. And if you don't, uh, please go watch the documentary, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, uh, directed by the late, great John Schnepp. It's an it's a very good documentary. I kind of want to see that movie. <laughs> oh my well, God. and my wife didn't know about it, and neither oh. did anybody else in the theater, because you just got this, like, you could just hear the whole room go, like, what? Am I looking <laughs> at <laughs> and the moment they saw, because the moment I saw the, they saw the spider, I thought of it. But I thought, like, this is one of those moments, again, of, like, Nicholas Cage is still around. Still, that's still around. Just, yeah. just come grab him and shoot him doing this. I don't understand why well, he that was, was on CG. set. He shot that. 
Okay. Well, then it didn't look like it because it just looked like he was nothing but sheen CGI. Well, uh, and yeah, I'm maybe de aging, but I think a lot of that. Oh, I think a lot of things. Some of it was de aging, but I also think a lot of it was just again they were putting this weird. I think that's what lends itself to the idea of like that the the Muschietti. It's not revisionist history. It's they were trying to make things look off because it was this interdimensional yeah. thing. I I think my whole thing was you could have used Tyler Hawkland, Henry Cavill, Tom Welling, and several. all those guys and gotten the exact same message across without really bad looking CGI. Like that that's kind of my thought on it. It so, didn't need to be those people at all. I'm not like I, mad, but I'm like that was all I kept wondering was like like the Christopher Reed thing is great because it's Christopher Reed. It was cool. And and Helen Slater. Like yeah. I was like that's cool. That's and George Reeve too. I was like that's because it it lends itself to i think it lends itself to a couple things one is just the history and legacy of dc having george reeve having christopher reeves and helen slater and adam west batman i was like it lends it, it it's it's paying homage in a way to the history and legacy of dc and film and on tv i think the reason you don't you i'm gonna i'm gonna be a little hypocritical here i think the reason they didn't use cavill or hecklin as, as cool as it would have been was because a when they made this movie i who knows how available cavill actually was and also it seemed like they were kind of not acknowledging the tv and i'll talk about that in a sec um but also we've we've seen them recently if not currently this is a way to pay homage to like the ones that started everything that kicked everything off for DC and film and TV. So the, I was, I was very happy with, with the ones they picked and, and, and the, the Nick cage one I think was just fun because in the years since that movie got canned, it's become such a viral thing to talk about is the Nick cage movie that could have been, um especially after schnepp's documentary came out so i was happy with the ones they chose i mean there were there were there were dozens of ones they could have picked I couldn't, of I couldn't tell who jay garrick was was it the flash dude it was no okay so so this this was a whole thing so a lot of people thought that the jay garrick they used was the guy from the flash tv show the guy from the flash tv show has said it's not him okay so there's been there's been some divide on this because granted the guy that played jay garrick is like the most generic looking white guy on the face of the earth like yeah. he got picked because he looked like jay garrick at the end honestly and he was good too but like yeah. he's the most generic white guy face on the face of the earth so the the and they and no and they have not come out and said one way or another what they actually did the divide has been created because some people think they may have used like like the AI art generation thing to make a Jay Garrick and because because the actor from the TV show is out there in the zeitgeist that it may have partially pulled from his likeness yeah. in yeah. images. Other people think that like me where I'm like the guy is the most generic looking white guy in the face of the earth. If you just designed a generic white guy Jay Garrick, it's going to look like him. Yeah. See, I, I think it would have been more impactful if it had been various flashes. I think it should have been Grant Gustin. I think yeah. I, I, I understood why they went for old school Jay Garrick because he was in there with the George Reeve Superman. So I get I get why they went with Jay Garrick in that specific other world. Yeah. I cannot for the life of me understand why there was not a Grant Gustin cameo in this sequence. Because well, because Ezra Miller showed up on the flash during crisis on infinite earths. And I'm like, if you're going to have Ezra Miller show up on the TV show flash, why, why are you not doing the same? Yeah. If you're it, 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 to me, it was like having Grant Gustin make that cameo should have been like the first thing on the, like the plan for the, all right. So what cameo we're doing? Well, obviously we're getting Grant Gustin in there for five seconds, right? Yeah. And the fact that they didn't, you don't even have to make them a suit. <laughs> like just, it just, it, it, you could have done what they did in across the spider verse for crying out loud. And just, you know, 
cleverly edited in a scene from the TV show. Yeah. Something, the fact that there's no acknowledgement of him in this vast multiverse thing that they're doing in this scene, I'm not going to lie, drove me kind of nuts. No, and that's what, that's, that's what I'm saying. Is like, I, I think instead of all these weird Superman and Batman cameos, you should have just given me various versions of the Flash. And now I know that they do that a lot in the Flash, but then make up some. Have one be Impulse. Have one be Max Mercury. Well, like, have it be the female Flash. Like, you could have done more that would have, to me, gone along with the story of how much the Flash can make mistakes yeah. and he's the time traveler. I, I just don't get why it's Superman cameo. Why wasn't John really Wesley Ship's Flash in there? Yeah. Again, it's just like, it's this, and, and again, I know that I know that this movie is very much a product of the old guard of DC. Like, that's something else yeah. to keep in mind. And DC, the old guard at DC and Warner Brothers was very weird about crossing over TV and movies. Why, I don't know, but they they just were. So I feel like if this had been under the current regime, this whole sequence would have played out a lot differently. Yeah. You probably would have seen a lot of those in there. You probably would have seen John Wesley Ship and Grant Gustin and, and just a whole bunch of other shit. Um, but if, if there is, I, while I enjoyed what we got as far as the cameos, it still left me with this idea in the back of my head of what could have, what we could have done. Yeah. The ones we got were really cool. Like, I loved that Adam West Batman, especially because we just lost him a few years ago. So, like, getting to see Adam West Batman in there with Cesar Romero's Joker laugh in the background, um, you know, the George Reeves Superman, Christopher Reeves and Helen Slater, those were great. I loved seeing those. Those were wonderful. But... And I know there's been some rumors going around right now about other ones they had shot that were actually cut from the movie, <laughs> like um, 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 Linda Carter's Wonder Woman and other other ones like that, which would have been really cool to see. So I'm sure. So so who knows? Maybe there were, and they just didn't make it into the movie. But the fact, like you said, that they, we didn't have the other flashes show up in this thing, yeah, is kind of mind-boggling to me really yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense but no, no other than that besides the only other thing is with the reset is given what we know now given that we do know that there was an ending where michael keaton pulls up as batman at the end yeah given that they have taken him out of aquaman and replaced him with ben affleck uh, for my understanding given that he was the batman in the batgirl movie and they can that batman to me it's very obvious that they were planning on going forward under the old regime, this is your soft reboot so we can bring Keaton in as Batman. And that has been completely and totally scrapped, whether That's that gone. was because of Gunn or because of something now, else. All that, all that happened before Gunn was even on the table. I that mean... Happened. That, happened, that happened long before... It I, I, I 100% believe that. I think... I'm 50-50. I, I think... Given the way the previous, given how the, the the previous regime was, and with Warner Brothers Discovery coming in, I I think that was yeah. I don't think Gun had anything to do with that because why would because if Gun's going to reset everything, why would he care? Why would he have them go and change the things if he's going to reset it anyway? Yeah, I I don't know the answer to that. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I'm not saying he directly influenced it, but. It just seems yeah. it's weird that they decided to, to go. I'm wondering what happened that they said, you know what? No, this is a bad idea. Let's get rid of it. So, but, uh, but no, other yeah. than that, I think. But also I will say Michael Keaton stuff. And this is so good. It does make me, it, it's just adding to the fuel to the fire of man. I wish we could have seen back girl. <laughs> this would have it's, been cool. It would have been may, cool. Who knows? It may reappear. I, somehow. There's no, I, I don't know. The, the, the legal gymnastics they will have to go through to make it get that movie released is insane um let's talk about the the reset in general because this is the reset button for the dc for dc going forward into into the dcu i don't believe so you. <laughs> oh i do i do 100 percent, and i'll tell you i'll tell you exactly why go clooney ah clooney 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 and the fact that barry changed something yeah. i think because I talked about this on another show. So I think because some people were asking if this is the reset button, 
people were because a couple of things came, a couple of questions keep coming up. If this is the reset button, where's the setup for anything in the DCU? Why is Clooney back at the end? Like the yeah, here's what I'll say. As soon as we see Clooney show up at the end of this movie, that to me is them putting the cap on this universe. Yes. The universe that Ezra Miller's Barry Allen lives in is a universe where George Clooney is now is back as Batman and we are putting a bow on it and never visiting this universe again. That's it. That universe is done. We moved on. Forget it. That's that's the end. That's it. People because people keep saying, oh, reset button. There was no way in hell, none whatsoever, anything from James Gunn's DCU was going to show up in this movie. Correct. Because, and I feel like I shouldn't have to point this out, they haven't shot anything. No Nor one, have they cast anything. No one's been cast. Like, they just finished the script for the Superman movie, which doesn't even start shooting until next year. So there was nothing from James Gunn's DCU they were going to put in this at all. So put that shit to bed right now. Yeah. I, I am so tired of hearing people bring that up. Yeah. Um, but as far as it, I, I also think people are very similar to most middle school English teachers teach, who are having their kids read the Scarlet Letter for the first time. I think people are looking for depth where there is none with some of the things about this movie and what people have said about this movie. You could interpret the term reset button a couple different ways. And I think people were interpreting it as, oh, he's going to come back and we're just going to be in the new universe now. And we're going to see all these things. No, because none of that's been cast yet. Yeah. It's a reset button in the sense that we are ending this universe full stop and now we can start with the new one with whatever we do next and that is the new canon forget everything that happened before this that's okay. that's the reset i can i can see what you mean yes if, if that's what you mean by they are resetting everything after this yes this this is not re this is not redirecting what we've had this is they're, ending what we had they're confu people are confusing reset with reboot or redirect or redirect reset yeah. means no we are starting over that's yeah. what reset when you reset your computer you shut everything down and boot it up fresh when you reset the chessboard you put everything back in its original spot and start a brand new game we are resetting and sometimes everything that one pawn doesn't get taken by anybody and he just goes straight back to his spot and looks like aquaman yep that's all it is that's all it is <laughs> what they are saying what i believe they are saying with this being the reset is everything that goes forward from here is the new canon of the dcu everything that happened before the end credits of the flash no longer matters forget about it move on with your lives and I am especially yeah. saying that to the five douchebags in my theater at the flash who every few minutes would go, boo, restore the Snyder verse, <laughs> go outside, go outside, touch some grass, get some sunlight and move on with your lives. I love the Snyder verse. I am bummed. We're not continuing on with it. I have made peace with the fact it's not coming back because there is nothing I can do to change it. Move on. So my theories as far as the reset go is that, like I said, hard stop on everything else that came before. We are going in fresh with brand new shit. Just accept it. Move on. And Aquaman is the first movie for that new stuff. Oh, well, technically Blue Beetle. I mean, yes, that's right. So James that's where Gunn, yeah. James so Gunn has said that Blue Beetle is a part of his DCU. Which so makes me so excited because that movie looks so good. <laughs> yeah. So I think it is a question of like what is happening with Aquaman. It's obvious yeah. from that end scene, he's going to still be Aquaman. I look the same in all universes. He's still going to get to be Aquaman. Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa's handsomeness transcends reality. Is yes. what it comes down to. Yes. Um, um, but yeah, so I think I think you're probably right. I, I don't think we're going to see any of this. Um, I think I said it to you on the phone. Part of me kind of wishes it was Clooney who got to be Batman in this movie and let him have some redemption. 
But I will say when he when he when the camera panned up and it revealed George Clooney's face, my theater had a simultaneous seizure. Everyone <laughs> lost their fucking minds and it wasn't it was it was less than a super excited to see him show up and more of a ah you got us oh yeah. you sons of bitches well because i was cracking up because i had asked you if val kilmer was in this so yeah, i was like I said, gonna... I said go see the movie yeah so i was like <laughs> you know no comment no comment and i'm like no i comment. wonder yeah. if how would they get him to do this there's no way they could get val kilmer to do and this. then when george Clooney showed talk. up yeah so when george Clooney showed up i was like yeah, that that's better. I like that better. Yeah, for for some reason, I don't know why. It just tracks. Is Batman and Robin a good movie? Not by any stretch of the imagination. Was but was George Clooney a good Batman? Not in the slightest. He was a good Bruce Wayne. Wasn't a good Batman. Um, him showing up at the end. I don't know. For some reason, it just felt right. I don't. I don't know why. Well, Post Ocean's Eleven, George Clooney, yeah, easily could have been Batman. Fre- still That's doing true. ER with George Clooney was yeah. ridiculous as Batman. Because 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 in Ocean's Eleven, there is no other way to describe George Clooney other than just the coolest guy in the room. Yeah, he's the coolest guy in every room he walks into, and even his Bruce Wayne in this scene, even though him having a beard makes no sense because Batman wouldn't let himself have a beard. Um, but when he shows up and he just gives Barry that look of like he's where Barry's like, "Wait, are you Bruce?" and and he just gives him that look of like, "What did you do?" <laughs> Yeah. Because, you know, here, here's what I'll say about the ending of this movie. It undercuts itself. Yes. That was a frustration I had. Having him, because he, he changed something. He did. And that, which, which also I will say explains why George Clooney is Batman, because he changed something. Mm-hmm. It, it moved the timelines. Just enough to have it be where Bruce Wayne yeah. is George Clooney in this movie. Uh, at the end of this yeah. movie, if you turn um, the wheel 0.5 percent for three blocks, it kind of makes a difference. Yeah, in three miles, you're in a completely different area. Yeah, so it was just enough of a change, but it undercuts the theme of the movie because the idea of the movie is that like, don't go back and change things because you don't know how it's going to change the present or the future, the idea that things are going to happen, how they're going to happen. I think it would have been a lot more meaningful if he just let things play out the way they were supposed to. And his lawyers just got some new evidence, a different camera angle or something that did show his dad's face. Cause then it would have been like, see that you let things just play out. And it worked out for your dad. Yeah. That would have that would have been so much more meaningful if by learning his lesson about not changing the past and just accepting the world for what it is, it still worked out. His dad still got out of would have still got out of prison by finding some other new evidence. Instead, he had to manipulate the universe to make it happen. And, and so he- it, messed it up anyway and he messed it up but 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 it it just it undercut having him still change something undercuts the theme of the movie and so that's why it's like it's like i really like this movie i I think the i think the ending the true ending the last couple minutes is where i'm like it's not that this is bad and i get that you're just like who cares because we're resetting after this but you undercut you undercut the, your own your own point, and so I mean, that was that was frustrating to me. To me, he was an idiot the entire movie, so of no, course I, he's going to still be an idiot. <laughs> well, I, I know. I just from from a writing standpoint, like from a writing standpoint, I'm like you just undercut your entire script. You know, it's just I don't know. But again, also we're resetting, so who gives a shit? Yeah. So, and I think that's you want to roll into the box office of it. Well, let's let's we haven't we haven't we haven't talked about this at length yet. And this is a Batman show. So Andy Muschietti has been announced as the director as the bat of, of Batman, the brave and the bold for James Gunn's DCU. We've hinted at this kind of throughout the episode, but to kind of put a nail in it, I, I 
I am super confident in him directing a Batman movie because homie knows how to handle some Batman. Woo doggy. I think he could handle the Batman. I'll be really interested to see if he gets to with as poorly as the flash is doing in the box office. Well, to tie this in with the box office conversation, I think, I don't think anybody is walking away from this movie, regardless of what your thoughts on it are. I don't think anybody's walking away with this thinking that Andy Muschietti was the problem. Uh, I mean, yes and no. I mean, look, I would feel that way, but you know, this is Warner brothers and not Disney, but you look, Ryan Johnson was supposed to have his own Star Wars thing. How many different announcements has DC made and it not happened? I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying I want that to happen. I'm just more curious of like if the Flash ends up being the bomb that it looks like it's going to be. Do do does Warner Brothers tell Gunn, hey, like, no offense. I know you like him, but uh, maybe we need to get somebody else. But I know because I, I have a feeling it's look it's obvious why this movie isn't going to do well it's ezra miller people like like say what i at the at the end of the day at the end of the day the main reason people aren't going to go see this movie is be is because of ezra miller is because people have big problems with supporting ezra miller and i totally do i'm telling you i am like in the months leading up to this movie the amount of people that i have seen posting online talking about not going to see this movie because they don't want to support a movie Ezra Miller is in. I get it. I, I, I again, I'll as give somebody, some of that. I'll give some of that as somebody who had a hard time putting that out of my mind while I was watching the movie. If I didn't have, if, if I, I saw this movie with a free movie pass with a free movie, a free movie yeah. coupon. If I had had to pay money to go see the flash, I wouldn't have gone to see it plain okay. and simple. So, no, uh, I, I think it's, yeah. this is what I'll say. We, we blame Shazam not working because of what's his name. Oh my God, his name, Zachary Levi. Levi. We're blaming this on Ezra Miller. Oh, I, no. thought, I, I blame, I blame Shazam 2's failure on black Adam. Well, and that's what I'm saying is I think there's of, us of us. There are us out there that are in the know of all these things. And there's a lot of people who are not. So I really feel like, this is just the descending momentum of DC. Black Adam wasn't good. Shazam wasn't good. Um, what was the movie before Black Adam? Um, was it Wonder Woman 84 or Suicide the Squad? Ba- the Batman. The Batman or Suicide Squad. Yeah. So I, I really feel like what's happening but, is but, I think... But the Suicide Squad did really well and got and, and was it did okay. Praised. It did, it, I mean, it, it was did. well praised, but it, it, but it, it was, was also well, a it was well received, and the Batman was a huge hit. So, so I don't know. I, I mean, I'm I have a feeling like this is the cascading down from those two f- people just losing interest in the DC stuff, either because the movies haven't been as good as they needed to be, or that they all know it doesn't mean anything because of gun. So, I think it's all the, all the factors together are just screeching this this movie's box office to a halt. But ultimately what it's going to come down to is I don't at the end of the day when you look at the at the hurt box office though, I don't think anybody's going to look at it and say, "Well, it's that Andy Muschietti guy." This movie had this movie had way too much working against it. Yes. Yes. It, it, had, it had way too many other outside factors working against it for them to point the finger at Andy Muschietti. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised they released it. To be honest with you, I can't believe. I it think most it. people are. I think most people are surprised this was released in theaters. I, I really and truly do. I think. Am I glad I saw it on a big screen? Yeah, it looked it, it was it was cool to see on a big screen. Absolutely, but I'm still shocked they released this movie because it's gonna it's gonna. But they also spent a lot of move money making yeah. this movie, so. I can imagine them wanting to try to recoup some yeah. of that cost, no, I guess. But that's what I, I think I've in the past, we have just seen companies drop directors, even when it's not their fault, when their movie doesn't do well. Look at Ben Affleck. They dropped yeah. Ben Affleck because his gangster movie bombed seriously. So they're like, well, no, we don't want you to direct the Batman it's movie. It's a boring movie. I really wanted to like it. I love gangster movies. It was not a good movie. I didn't, I didn't see it. So that that that's my thought. I think I'm I'm curious to see if this does not get legs and end up making them money over the next three weeks, four weeks. 
if that uh, we'll changes see. their decision. But the fact that they announced it before the movie released, maybe it, it won't. I mean, yeah, because they, they announced it. But also the thing to remember, too, is is Andy Muschietti has done well by Warner Brothers in the past because both of his It movies were under Warner Brothers, and those were those were big hits. Yeah. So, you know, for a guy who, who does not have a long resume, I mean, Andy Muschietti's resume is pretty short. He did um, uh, the short film in 2008. He did the uh, full version of it in 2013 called Mama. And then he, you know was a he was an ep on the lock and key series but then he did it and then it chapter two and those were both big hits so yeah. and then it's he got possible. flash and this is after the keep in mind the flash also went through a lot of directors before yeah. it landed on andy muschietti so but if but also if we're looking at this from a batman standpoint his handling of the batman character in this movie yes was for what little time either Batman is on screen, it was some of the best Batman we've seen. Yes. Um, and and so I, as far as Andy Muschietti handling a Batman movie, I mean, he's got my vote. Yeah, he's I'm I'm fine vote. with it. Batman doesn't require a lot of CG. We'll be good. <laughs> yeah. Depends on who's fighting. We'll see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So look, we've we, we've talked at length about this movie, the things we like, the things we didn't like. You know, the, here here's you know to give some final thoughts because I didn't talk about this really in the review, but I want to talk about it now, which is is how it in their adaptation of the Flashpoint storyline. There was something they did in this movie that was similar to Flashpoint that I thought they did better than Flashpoint, which is explaining how the time travel thing uh, fucked everything up. Yes. Because in Flashpoint, it's just, ah, speed force, ripple, ele- ripple effect, yada, yada, yada. Instead, they did what uh, Avengers Endgame did, which was, no, it's a different theory of time travel. Because there's the linear theory of time travel that we all know from Back to the Future. Which, by the way, I love all the Back to the Future nods in this movie, especially because Zemeckis at one point was was tapped to direct this movie so yeah. the fact that so when he says like no Corey stoles uh, 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 or, or, or uh, whatever his name is 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 marty i was like eric stoles or eric stoles i was like wait are they, oh oh no it changed everything absolutely fantastic um but i loved when when bruce is do, using the spaghetti to describe this yes this other theory because because avengers endgame the way they did uh, time travel was this other ver- this other theory of time travel that physics splinter in the tree. Yeah, whereas this one was this another theory of how people, how people think time travel works. It was a very good way of explaining how Barry changing one thing can change all of time. Correct, and because it differentiates it- you from what the MCU did with their time exactly it's different enough from everything else we've seen to be its own thing and to explain it because again just having reverse flash pop in and say "Eh, it's a ripple effect that what that tells me is like you're just trying to explain it away and move on the story which i get it you're a comic book you're not trying to get in the science of it all (laughs) people are smarter nowadays and tend to ask more intelligent questions especially when they go see their comic book properties because we're used to a certain standard now yeah and so that was a much more satisfying explanation for everything being different than yeah. what we got in actual flashpoint and so i i really enjoyed that um and it's michael keaton doing it and, it's, and it's michael really keaton's one of those dudes if he tells you something you're like oh yeah no you're right you're he's batman so fucking, and michael keaton I he's have so to goddamn you. charming and charismatic i'll believe anything he tells me look look i believe that um hank pym can carry a tank in his pocket but that Ant Man is super strong because Hank Pym, i.e., Michael Douglas, told me the science, and he yep. would not lie to me. So this nope. all makes sense. Don't yep, you exactly. come at me and tell me he can't move a building behind him? Exactly, because <laughs> nope. Michael Douglas told me this was Michael possible. Michael Douglas told me it's fine. <laughs> if Michael Douglas says it, it is true. Um, there are just certain actors that when they tell you something, you're like, I believe you. Yeah. Uh, but overall, <laughs> final thoughts on this movie. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I had a really good time watching this movie. This will be one I go back and rewatch. Probably mostly for specific scenes. Yeah. But I think, you know, in a in a periodical in a periodic rewatch of of old of old DCU stuff like I tend to do, 
this is gonna go like i'm not i'm not gonna avoid this movie uh i i had a very good time are there things about this movie that that frustrate me 100 percent. yeah but the stuff this movie does right far exceeds what it didn't do right like we we, we were texting on the phone the other day like when this movie hits, it soars. Yes. The good the good stuff in this movie is outstanding. The bad stuff in this movie is pretty bad. Yes. But but the stuff that soars, there's so much more of it. There's so much more to like than dislike in this movie. And yeah. I I again just to reiterate, I understand some people have a hard having a hard time with this movie because of Ezra Miller. I get that as, as somebody who has made a movie whose lead actor became problematic after the fact, and I had to make some difficult decisions. I get that. So I respect anyone whose decision to not watch this movie because of Ezra Miller. I, I get that. If you can find it in yourself to see this movie though, I highly recommend it. I think it's a lot of fun. Turn your brain off to the outside world and just watch the movie for what it is. And I think you'll have a good time. I, my final thoughts is this, and we haven't gotten into this and I, I, I dare bring it up, but I feel like they did Supergirl wrong. This movie tells me that a male Kryptonian can fight the Kryptonians and stop them, but a female Kryptonian cannot. And I have a big issue with that, especially because <laughs> in Man of Steel, the only reason Zod shows up is because Kalel activated the ship and the beacon went off and he showed up. With that in mind, there is zero reason for Zod to be on this planet. So I think my explanation around a couple of those issues, because I, I get where you're coming from with the Supergirl thing. I think the only reason I push back on that a little bit is because when he fought Clark, Clark had had his whole life with his powers to understand what he could do with them. Maybe. Car had had, had 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 12 hours. I don't know. He he was just flying. I don't know. I, it, it was that he, was my big. He had his whole life to understand like the heat vision and the x-ray vision and all that. Also they were fighting for different reasons. Uh, Kara was fighting with a lot of anger and hatred in her heart, hatred for humankind, hatred for Zod, because finding out that he killed Kal-El as a baby, um, different motivations. Um, but you're not, I also think you're onto something with that because it is kind of a, it's like, it's a bad look. It's a bad look it's because bad. without she also, she also got her ass kicked a little too easily yeah. um, is what I'll say. Yeah. Um, as far as what was it? What was the other point that you made? Um, the only reason they come to earth is because Kalel activates the ship and the beacon calls them. They know where he is. Well, there's none of that in this movie, but also remember they had programmed into the ship that they were into the pods. They said they sent Kara and, and Kalel off with were programmed to go to earth. So when he says we captured Kal-El's pod, it could have easily been like, oh, it was going here. Well, then that's where we're going. And it took him 30 years. Well, we, we got to remember, <laughs> we got to remember, dude, we're talking, we don't know where the, where the hell. Um, yeah. I, I just feel like there, yeah, I, 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 think, I, think, I think you're trying to inject a little too much real world, real world science no, into, into no, your I'm science. I'm just saying, I, I think they're just, this is one of those, it's like the Black Adam thing. There are two lines you could give me. Sure that fix that because we because we know as dc fans that kara and and kal-el took a wormhole to get to earth and it brought them out at different points in time because kara was technically older than kal-el but she got to earth after he did 30 years later so he depending was depending on which mythos you go with depending on which mythos you go with <laughs> yeah it, it's 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 a question that could be answered with two lines of dialogue yeah you could have easily said you know we had so many trajectories. We finally have the one that we wanted or something yeah. that says, this is why we came here. And and maybe, that, maybe I got to, maybe I got to watch the movie again. Maybe he says it and we just missed it. I don't know. Because I remember just going like, scene. there's nothing because I, because yeah, that was my only kind of like that. Those two things are the ones that really kind of like, 
And I'm like, do I really, really care? You know, there is, it is like, he did not fight anybody in that field. You know, he fights the two or three, he fights the big dude and and the girl in Smallville. And then he fights homeboy one-on-one in Metropolis. So maybe he can't fight all three of them. So, okay. So, so so just looking at the plot, at the the plot synopsis uh, that we have here, it says that uh, Zod intercepted an infant, an infant Kal-El's escape pod killed him during a failed attempt to retrieve the codex needed to repopulate the Kryptonian species. Zod revealing that the Codex was within Kara, not Kal-El. So odds are he was like, okay, so the Codex is in Kara. Their pods were heading to this planet. We need to go to this planet. 30 years later. <laughs> Wormhole, dude. I don't know. That's yeah. that's that's the part that's like one line of dialogue would have would have yeah. answered. Just give me years. give me something that just kind of and it's it's not super big in a way but it was all i kept going was like there's no it's reason not, for yeah, them to be here it's not a huge plot point but it is a question yeah um, it's it's a question of like who didn't watch man of steel and go yeah. we have to answer this <laughs> yeah. but at the same time it 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 was what it was like it, it's, it's but that was my thing i i felt i did not like the look of super girl can't beat them but superman does that was yeah. my, you know, I'm usually not into that kind of stuff, but I'm like, give it me something that tells me why she can't and he could. Yeah. You know, that, that I, th- I, th- I think, I think, I think my point was probably the best I can come up with is just, she had been super girl for, she yeah. had been, she had had her powers for 12 hours, yeah. whereas Cal L had had them for 30 years. And, but then he, he did not have three I other meta humans saving him. I helping didn't him. say it was a great explanation. <laughs> I didn't say it was a great explanation. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to find something to put you, yeah. put you at ease. Yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, like, I think this is a fun movie. Um, it is again. I, I wish Ben Affleck was keeping going. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm really hoping we never see Ezra Miller again, either in yeah. this movie or period. Um, well, because I know Andy Muschietti had said, he's like, if I direct another Flash movie, it's still going to be Ezra Miller. And I'm like, well, first of all, I think James Gunn's going to have the final say in that. But yeah. uh, sec- second of all, um, you're assuming you're going to get to do another Flash movie. <laughs> yeah. No, so. I would not. Um, yeah, I, 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 it was fine. It was it was it was a fun day at the movies. Uh, I may watch this with my son later down the line, um, but it it it's. It's to me, it it just goes in that shuffle of pretty much everything the DCU has done, which is like, it's fine. Like, watch okay. the movie with your son, and then when Supergirl comes on screen, be prepared to have a conversation with him. Because, <laughs> like, I know, like, I know, like, young Barry, you know, being enamored with with Kara was a joke in the movie, but also I get it. Um, gorgeous, just she was gorgeous absolutely but she again i hope sasha kaye because i mean like it's not that she hasn't had work because i think she was in game of thrones uh, i think before this um or no she was doing uh she was on a soap opera, soap opera on, yeah that's, um i don't know why i thought game of thrones uh because everyone is in game of thrones these days yeah. um but i really hope considering that all she's had has been like a mini series the young and the restless and then the flash yeah. she did her she made an impression in her 30 minutes of screen time in this movie and i really hope not just playing supergirl again but i hope she gets the same kind of reaction that jenna ortega seems to be getting which is suddenly she's everywhere. getting cast and ev- get everywhere because i wouldn't be surprised if the two of them show up in something together after this yeah. but sasha Kaye rules as supergirl in this movie and i hope I hope this is a big jumping off point for her career. Same, same. So, all right. We have talked about this movie ad nauseum. It's, it's a long, long review, but there's a lot to unpack with this movie. I'm sure we've probably missed some things too. So guys, please let us know your thoughts, things you want to talk about with this movie. Uh, you can let us know over on Twitter. You can find us on Twitter at we are the Batman. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. Mike Shea. You can find me on Twitter as Mr. J Ninja. 
Ooh, that is going to do it finally for this week's episode of We Are the Batman. We will see you guys again next week. Same bat time, same bat podcast channel. Bye-bye.